part two of our pitchers preview here with Josh McDonald. A uh, couple intriguing guys uh, that since I last saw him pitch uh, changed their arm slot over the off season. That's mm-hmm. Angus Mayock and uh, Caleb Worcester. Uh, yeah. Josh, kind of tell us a little bit about those two guys. Well. It's funny because if you look at them, they don't look anything uh, like each other. I think Angus is like 6'5", 220 range, and uh, Caleb, you know, he might he might be scratching six feet, uh, more probably in the 180 range sort of thing. So the, one's righty, one's lefty. So so they don't look look very similar. But one thing I noticed uh, last year is that they're really good athletes, both of them. I think Caleb got recruited a little bit to play football. I know Angus was a really good basketball player growing up. And when you watch him do any other sort of uh, athletic uh, movements, you know, when we're doing ground balls, PFPs in the weight room, they're always one of the best guys that we have. And then when they got on the mound, for whatever reason, they look stiff. So, you know, basically what, what we came up with was, you know, how do we do, how do we get them to, to be athletic when they're throwing? You know, that, that's really important, you know, in, in, for us, you know, in our program, that's always a really important thing. So Caleb one day just kind of threw one from down there and said, hey, I like this. Can I work on it? And I was like, yeah. And Angus, I thought with his, you know, with the way he kind of kind of goes about his PFPs, he kind of drops his arm naturally. And I said, how about we try this? It took Angus like a week to, to get used to it. And now both of them are, they're throwing, not only are they throwing more strikes and their secondary stuff's better, both of them are actually throwing a little harder at least consistently harder than they were last year. So uh, I'm really excited. I'm really excited for both of them. They've worked really hard. They're good teammates. You know, they both played sure last year. They weren't on trips. And now, you know, they're going to probably, you're, we're probably going to see them on the mound here in this first weekend. So uh, I'm just really excited for both those guys. A guy who literally came out of nowhere is is Jimmy <laughs> Wang. Can you give us, yeah. first off, we met Jimmy, uh, yeah. not this past fall, but the previous yeah. fall. And uh, just kind of take us through this unique story. It kind of <laughs> uh, really makes uh, recruiting seem a yes. lot easier. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, uh, let's start it off. We're the best recruiters in the world. No. Um, it, Coach Pender's got an email from a kid from Michigan that, by the name of Jimmy Wang. And he said he, you know, he was originally, he's originally from Beijing, China. He's been in America, I think, you know, three years, loves baseball, uh, always trained over in China growing up. And uh, when he first sent, you know, he forwarded me the email, I was like, what do you think? And I was like, yeah, all right, sure. You know, you know, pretty much dismissing it. Um, But he told Jimmy to stop by the office when he got to, um, campus he stopped by the office like a couple days before school started classes started and here was his six foot three very athletic looking kid and you know it, he definitely looked like an athlete so we, we said all right come out to the to the walk-on tryout and uh he came out to the to the open tryout and he was throwing you know 88 92 so we uh, were like all right let's give this kid a shot he came out he was with us for a few days. We got him in a game. Connor Moriarty hit a ball 15,000 feet off of him. And, uh, you know, the next uh, Monday, I think he was in there saying that he was, uh, he was a little nervous that he would, if he would be able to handle both his, he has a really heavy course load and baseball. I didn't think it was fair, um, fair to possibly have to walk away from it during the season. So he, he wasn't going to continue. And that was basically it. I kind of told all the guys to be very nice to Jimmy when they saw him on campus because of <laughs> I was just hoping and praying that we'd get another chance uh, to work with him. And sure enough, um, I got a text uh, towards the end of September from Jimmy saying he'd like to take one more crack at it. You know, we sat him down saying, if we're going to do this, understand that you got to be all in. He's been all in and, uh, you know, he's, you know, there, there are obviously some ups and downs with them, you know, because I don't think he's actually played in a game maybe for like three years, maybe. Um, and he's trying to, you know, really, you know, make a jump at the highest level of collegiate baseball. So there, there's certainly some, there's going to be some learning curves there, but I mean, you're looking at a kid that can get it up to 92, 93 with a really good slider. And when he's on, nobody seems to hit him and, the thing that I'm most impressed with though is that you know he's been able to really kind of adapt with his learning curve 
And, you know, he, he's really good when, when we go through the, the PFP workouts and the picks and when we do 27 outs, when the, when we're putting on situations, it doesn't look like it speeds up on him. So for us, it, it, if he's able to continue to make the leaps that he's done already, I mean, we could have something very special on our hands. You're always known for going out to California to get guys. Kenny House is <laughs> one of your arms that you've brought in. Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about Kenny yeah, Kenny was a guy that we got late again. Um, we actually got him, I think, on the the day we found out that Mike Burroughs was also signing. So it was kind of a kind of a blessing that you know we got some bad news on one day, but we also found out that you know that we we got some, we got some help uh, coming along the way. Kenny's a strike thrower. You know, he uh, that's the thing I like about him. He's got th three pitches. They all have some movement on it. You know, I think he threw almost 100 innings last year at El Camino Community College. So, um, you know, he's got some experience underneath his belt. Same sort of thing. He looks like a veteran when he's out there in terms of, you know, bunch situations, fielding his position. Um, his stuff hasn't been as good as when I saw it originally in uh, California. But I think I think it will come, come along. He's shown some spurts of it. But I think he's going to have a very calming present for us. Uh, role wise, I think he could probably start and relieve for us, and you know he's going to have to really be kind of a chameleon for us in you know in that staff. You know he's going to have to kind of jump around into different roles for us, kind of like Kirsten did for us at times last year. And um, but he, he's again he's another one of these Cali guys, good teammates here for the right reasons. And um, if he gets his stuff going, he should help us win games. All right, I'll let you get to it. It's a long list of, list of freshmen. Yeah. Uh, kind of roll through them for us. Um, all right. Uh, I, I guess we'll start off first with, uh, with Carl Johnson. Uh, you know, he came over from, from West Point mid-year last year. Um, but like, like most, of the, most of the freshmen that we have, each, each one of these guys has just really good talent. But there are certain things that, that they also are showing, too, in terms of, um, you know, learning curve-wise, you know. Uh, and and Carl, Carl's no different. Um, at times he looks very dominant at other times it, it looks like it speeds up on him a little bit out there but when he's on he has you know three pitches that are above average um, you know he has some movement on his fastball he gets some velocity on his fastball and I think he's a guy that you know I wouldn't be surprised if he hears his name drafted one day out, out of here the other guy you know who I think has maybe some of the best stuff of any freshman we've had is Jake Sanderson you know Jake you know Jake can get the ball I think he's gotten up to 92 uh, so far this, this offseason. He has a killer slider. He throws from a, a really funky low three-quarter slot, which, you know, I love. Um, and he pitches with emotion. It, it seems like sometimes the emotion gets the best of him. And I think that's something that he's going to have to kind of learn to channel a little bit. I don't want to take all the aggression away from him, obviously, because I think it also helps him. I think he, he is always in attack mode, except sometimes... <laughs> Seems like he's attacking himself instead of attacking the hitter. So um, he's a guy that I think if he starts to, if he gets it going, I mean he could be a, a killer weapon for us uh, uh, this year. Uh, another guy, Tyler Briggs, he reminds me a little bit of, of John Russell in a way. He's just kind of kind of the frame. He, he kind of has a a lanky frame to him. Um, he throws from a, a, a similar sort of loose, you know, high slot that that John threw from. He has a, has a, has a pretty good slider. Um, but you know, he kind of goes into retreat mode. It seems like sometimes as well, where, uh, where he's not always attacking hitters and he's not always trusting that his stuff is really good. And it is, I mean, we're talking, you know, 87 to 91 with movement and a, and a plus slider, but there's just times where it seems like he's trying to make the perfect pitch and he's just nibbling, just nibbling. And at this level, uh, the hitters are so good that what they'll end up doing is that they wait them out. And at least our hitters have. So, we're hoping that we start to see some uh, some changes that way as as we start to move on through the spring here, and if he could start to show us that he can attack our hitters and and you know get himself in good advantage counts, and then he'll be ready to help us on the mound uh, this spring. Another guy is a kid by the name of Adam Schwartz. You know we love Schwartz. He does everything the right way. Super strong kid, possible two way for us eventually. We think right now his Best chance for us is on the mound. Um, he actually had a freak injury where he he got a cut on his finger 
um, this off season that, that needed stitches and it, and it shut them down for, I think two and a half, three weeks. Well, it's kind of like the same thing that we're talking about with Mason two and a half, three weeks at this time of the year is just killer. Cause you're trying to play catch up with all these guys that are really starting to, to come along. And I think that's kind of what we found out with Adam is that, you know, just, just really terrible timing that, you know, he, he looks like he's three to four weeks behind all these other guys right now. But I think eventually this is going to be a kid that can can throw the ball really hard. He has, you know, that what everybody loves. He has that bat, uh, that that spin rate, that back spin ball. He has a pretty good breaking ball. He attacks hitters. So I think I think if we can get a couple more weeks to kind of get his arm in shape here, uh, he'll give himself a chance too. Another guy that we have is a guy by the name of Will Lucas. Um, Will is a two-way guy for us that I think we're going to, sh you know, lean more towards shading him uh, as a uh, position player. Um, but in a pinch, you know, I think that he could go out there tomorrow and get us three outs. You know, he just seems like that type of kid, super confident, uh, super competitive. So um, I don't think he could be a 20 appearance guy and play the posi position right now. Um, so we, we're going to we're going to just let him focus on that and if we need him in a pinch we're going to use him and the last two guys are guys uh who are who are coming back from injury one is a kid by the name of leaf bigelow uh leaf is a is a kid out of vermont yeah i don't think he'll be back from tommy john surgery that he had uh after his high school season this year um so that's pretty much the plan that we're going to go with right now um so We'll find out what he has next year. And the other one is a is a kid by Tim by the name of Tim Faffenbickler. And Timmy, uh, I think the best uh, way to describe the way he throws is think of right-handed PJ Pullen. It, I don't even know what to call the slot. It's not sidearm. It's not three-quarter. I guess it's kind of in between it. Um, but I mean, super fast arm. I mean, one of the fastest arms uh, we've ever had in here. When when you look at it from the side, it. It eerily reminds me of when I would see Timmy as a freshman, where the arm is just moving so fast. Even I don't even know what the gun's going to pick up on it. Even if it's only picking up, you know, 87, 88, it just looks like it's going so much faster than that. And uh, his stuff looks electric. But the same thing, you know, he's coming back from Tommy John surgery. You know, he's just being cleared to face some hitters now. So we're not really sure exactly if and when he'll be ready for us this year. And, and if he is and he can help us out, that'd be great. But if he's not, uh, the Huskies have a, a really good arm for the future for sure. Thanks, John.